just smoked a huge fatty. What the heck? What did I catch? What is that? Whoa. What is that? On the jerk, is that a giant shad? That's a big ass shad. That's exactly what that is. That is a giant gizzard shad. Woo! <laughs> I can't believe it. I had never seen anything like this before, guys. You just pooped all over me, you son of a. Oh yeah, fall. Probably my favorite time of year. The nights are getting cooler and the water temperatures are finally starting to drop. And the fish are once again getting active. Bait fish are on the move, and to me, fall is all about bait fish. Follow the bait fish and you'll find the bass. It's the fall push and bait fish equals bass. Today on Captain's Corner. It's been a long, hot summer, but relief is finally here. That summer heat made things tough for all of us. All across this country, water temperatures soared. And with hot water comes low oxygen. Bass need oxygen. So in the summer, they follow that oxygen. The two best places to find that oxygen are in deep holes or shallow in thick, heavy green cover. But either which way, in the summer, they simply slow down. And the bite gets tough for all of us. But as fall begins to approach, the nights get cooler, and so does that water. And that begins the fall transition. As that oxygen begins to rise and spread out, the bait fish follow it and move to the shallower waters where that oxygen is much more plentiful than it was before. And with all this energizing, oxygen-rich water, life begins to move a whole lot faster. Bait fish are incredibly predictable, and they follow this pattern to a T. And after a long, slow summer, those bass are entirely focused on fresh, active bait fish. Follow the bait fish and you'll find the bass. So here's the best methods I use to find and imitate those bait fish to catch big, hungry fall bass. I can see a bunch of smaller things, like shad or something, popping at the surface out here. There we go. Good fish, good fish. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, nice bass. Oh yeah, he's a tank. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, on the chatter bait. Yeah, baby, there's a beauty. Woo, yeah. On the chatter bait, baby. <laughs> yes, look at that. Another one of my, my favorite transition lures the chatterbait got me a beautiful beautiful bass here what a beauty he was right up in that grass i just got it right on the edge and he smashed it awesome awesome let's let that go nice Woo! in early fall there is still plush thick cover grasses and weeds most bay fish will be in that cover feeding on algae, bugs, planktons, the stuff that grows in those weeds. And it's also protection, or so the bait fish are programmed to believe. That's why my first early fall focus is always on those shallow grasses and weeds. For two reasons. Number one, there is always bass up shallow, all year long, but especially in the summer. It's shade and it's oxygen. So those bass that were already there are still going to be there, only they're going to be way more active knowing that food train is coming in. Number two, so are all the other bass. Those summer deep water bass, those fish that chose to follow the oxygen down to deeper water, the oxygen has moved up and spread out. The bait fish have pushed into that shallow cover and the big deep water bass are stacking up along the edge of that cover, facing in, ready to charge in and attack all those feeding bait fish. So in early fall, my entire focus is on the inside of all that shallow grass and weeds with active, fast moving fish imitating baits. Lose the frog. No more focus on slow moving, penetrating baits like craws, creatures, or worms. It's all about bait fish right now. 
And to me, that screams soft plastic paddle tail swim baits. Burn over the top and through all that shallow cover. Oh, Jesus, he came out of the water. Oh, he's little. Guess he doesn't look very big, but he's hungry. Come on, you can eat it, you're hungry. No, I think it's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why he's got a big old belly on him. He's a hungry little bugger. Gone for that paddle tail again. Small mouth, big belly. There it is. A six inch bait and a ten inch bass. I find lightly weighted swim bait hooks with a screw lock keeper work perfectly. They come in all sorts of sizes and weights. What hook you use depends entirely on what swim bait you choose to use. You want to make sure that there's enough hook to penetrate through that entire swim bait. And you really don't want a lot of weight here. One sixteenth of an ounce or in around there is probably plenty. You're mostly going to be burning these swim baits across the surface over top of those weeds and grasses where you can expect some incredible explosions this time of year. There's a huge variety of soft plastic paddle tail swim baits out there. Which bait you choose to use, that's entirely up to you. I have my favorites, but that's not what this show is all about. So grab your favorite swim baits. Don't be afraid to try different sizes. Bass in the fall are feeding heavy on their favorite bait fish. Whether it's shad, bluegill, shiner, or a mix of the bunch, find what bait fish they're preferring, and that's how you choose what colors to use. Match the hatch the best that you can, but no matter what, make sure it looks like a fish. Oh my God! You see that? Yeah. I got him too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was crazy. Oh, dude, is he decent? Yeah, yeah he is. Actually, he's really nice, Ted. <laughs> he hit that as soon as it landed in his mouth. Pretty much. Dude, there's a good one. <laughs> Skinny. Big old head. That's, I mean, he's got a head of a four pounder. Oops. Catch a small one with a tiny mouth and a big belly. Here's a big one with a giant mouth and a tiny belly. <laughs> one of the better fish we've seen today though. Well, he's probably only about two, two and a quarter pounds. Should be four. Right on, right on. Whoosh. As we push farther in the fall, those water temperatures continue to drop. Those thick grasses and weeds will start to die off and thin out slowly. Dying vegetation depletes the oxygen in the water around it. And that vegetation starts to die off from shallow to deep. The lesser oxygen levels also stop the growth of what those bait fish were in there feeding on in the first place. So the bait fish begin to push out of that cover. Again, following that oxygen. Now they will start to school back up and cruise along the outside edges of all that cover where there is still plenty of oxygen and food to be found. And you guessed it, the bass are gonna follow suit. Those shallow bass will be just inside of that cover, facing outwards, waiting to ambush those schools of bait fish as they cruise on by. And those deep water bass, they're gonna be stacking up just outside, facing towards that cover, waiting to corral those bait fish up against the edge of the cover. This stage in the transition can be wild. The bass and the bait fish are going to be moving fast. The pace of the bait fish and the bass picks up and so do I with my presentation. Lipless crankbaits, jerk baits, square bills and chatterbaits, even swim jigs. Working that outside edge of the cover and working it fast. Follow that bait fish, imitate that bait fish and find big feeding fall bass. There you go. We're on. Oh, God. Nice fish, guys. Big fish. Big fish. Another beauty. This is a good fish. Oh, man. Good fish. Oh, oh don't lose this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, another tank. Another tank. Get him in the, Get him in the boat. <laughs> Yeah! This chatterbait just smoked a huge fatty. 
A big fatty. Ah, look how fat he is. Oh, he is so fat. Oh, yeah. Look at, oh, my God. Look, check this out. He just finished eating something decent size, and he just hammered my chatterbait. That's why he's so fat, buddy. Look how fat he is. He is so fat because that's a, that's a fish. That's the rest of that fish in his mouth is in that belly still. Wow. What a gorgeous fish. Wow, beauty. Go back and finish your food. Woo! And for that final fall push transition, as we get farther into the season, the bait fish continue to push out farther, preparing to go deep again for the winter. The majority of these schools have now moved off the cover areas and are spreading out along the flats and secondary points. Areas that still hold structure, like submerged grasses, rock piles, or even oyster beds. Those vast flats between that shallow cover and those deep holes and channels. Those bass are now staging up, holding tight to the structure and looking up for those big balls of bait fish. Those submerged clumps of grass, rock piles, even stumps can really hold a lot of bass. And those balls of bait fish roaming the open water will naturally gravitate from structure point to structure point. Now there are several baits that can be effective here, but to me, Nothing imitates clustered scared bait fish like a spinner bait with a swim bait trailer. That combination of the flashing spinning blades, that flowing skirt, and the thumping tail of the swim bait trailer look to a bass like a four course meal and they are ready to eat. You can cover a ton of water quickly with spinner baits like this. Cast them a mile, roll it right past that structure the bass are holding on, and I guarantee you're gonna get their attention with spinner baits and swim bait trailers. That's it! <laughs> Woo! Finally a decent fish. He just smashed that. Woo! <laughs> he's not even that big, but he's the biggest one today. Definitely the biggest fish today. Woo! There we go. Beauty, That's awesome. beauty, he hammered that thing. Oh, All right, sweetheart, thank you. Oh, oh. There it is. Woo. <sighs> yeah, buddy. So that's it, guys. The fall transition is finally here. The water's cooling down, the oxygen is rising up, the bait fish are moving shallow, and the big bass are following. Follow the bait fish, find the bass. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell, because there's plenty more coming right here on Sawgrass Bassin'.